Good morning. My name is Andrew White. I'm a Farm Bill Wildlife Biologist with Pheasants Forever and Quail Forever in Missouri. We're out here um, on this hot July morning looking at some pollinator habitat. Um, pollinator habitat is extremely important for not only us as humans but for wildlife as well. Um, from the human aspect, um, pollinators specifically, all your pollinating insects, mammals, everything that pollinates, um, is responsible for one out of every three bites of food that we eat. Um, additionally, they account for uh, billions of dollars in the uh, agricultural community and the economy. From a wildlife aspect, the more diversity you have out in the field, the more insects you're going to attract, which is going to attract even more wildlife. We've got dick thistles out here, there's quail calling in the background, uh, there's turkeys over the hill, deer use this as a green browse food plot, so it's extremely important. Um, and it's not just a field of grass. Uh, we got a lot of diversity out here. I see about 15 different species of wildflowers while I'm standing out here. The key to a successful pollinator plot is going to be your site preparation. That is by far the most important aspect of putting one of these in. Um, typically you want to you want to burn it down chemically um, with broad spe spectrum herbicide uh, to get rid of everything that's there currently. Once that dies, taking a prescribed fire and running it through to get down to your bare ground um, is going to encourage what's left in the seed bank of the grasses, uh, the weeds and everything to express themselves again. And then in the fall, come back in and hit it with another herbicide application. That's your site preparation before you plant. Um, typically with natives, you want to plant in the dormant season. Um, here in Missouri, uh, the, the dormant seeding dates are November 16th through March 15th. Um, and, and your first year uh, is going to be critical too. If you're still having a lot of weed pressure, you can keep it mowed no less than 10 inches tall. Um, that will reduce the weed competition and allow your natives to express themselves a little bit better. So as a, as a wildlife biologist, I often get questioned um, by landowners, by the public, why do you care about flowers? Why do you care about insects? Um, one, as you can see, this is pretty awesome to look at. It's awesome to stand out. The, the buzz of all the insects is deafening. We've got a, a great diversity of, of songbirds out here, as you can hear. Um, but looking at quail and pheasants specifically, this is awesome brood rearing habitat. All these flowers are attracting all these insects, and for the first few weeks of a chick's life, that's what they need to survive. That's gonna give them the, the protein and the nutrients they need to grow quickly. Um, and that's, growing quickly is how quail have been able to hang on for so long here in Missouri um, and, and be able to, to reproduce the following year. Um, so quick, quick growth is needed for these chicks, uh, for quail and pheasant, um, and, and pollinator habitat gives them just that. Uh, when we look at the, the, the plant structure, um, as you can see around me and behind me, we got varying heights. Um, so our canopy is at different heights. Um, we have different wildflowers um, that are going to attract different insects. Uh, and, and looking from a bird's eye view down on top of it, you got a dense canopy up top. And then down below, um, in, in previous videos, we talked about having bare ground underneath. And that's exactly what pollinator habitat does. It has that dense canopy up top to shield them from weather, shield them from, from predators. Um, so um, while allowing them to move freely underneath, um, unobstructed, uh, and that they're going to be able to forage for bugs that have fallen on the ground or craw crawling on the ground as well. All right, so you've heard me talk about diversity. Um, when it comes to wildlife habitat and managing for wildlife, diversity is going to be key. Um, we, as you can see behind me, like I've said, we've got several different species of wildflowers. This site specifically was seeded two years ago. Um, it was. It, they had performed the, the appropriate site preparations like I discussed earlier. Um, and then they, they planted a diverse mix. So they, the, the mix that they planted, um, I helped them come up with the mix, um, helped them design it, and it was about 25 species. And in the second year, looking around, I can, I can spot about 15 species. So that's doing pretty, pretty good um, at this site. Um, now, with that, you can't just, all, all native habitats, all native plantings, it's not something that you can just plant and walk away from and leave it alone. Uh, there, there is a little bit of labor. Um, I often refer to it as labor of love um, because you get rewards like this, like we're standing in today. Uh, future site management after that first year, um, usually um, you'll have some cool season grasses coming in and sneaking into the mixture. Um, you'll have enough 
dead plant material on the top um, that the sunlight isn't able to reach the soil surface and, and create more, uh, get more of the wildfires that you seeded to germinate. Um, so what we want to do typically in this situation is about year three, year four, uh, depending on what the site looks like, you want to come in and do a perform a prescribed fire on it. Um, this does two things. Um, it removes all the dead plant material and opens up the soil and then two, it puts more nutrients back down into the soil to help those wildflowers germinate. Um, and so going in every three to four years after that um, and doing the exact same thing is going to ensure over time that your plot is successful. Um, we're standing in a, a field that's probably about 20, 30 acres. Um, so this is a pretty expen uh, ex expensive plot. Um, and I know working with the landowner, um, he, he is perfectly comfortable with prescribed burning and doing it himself. Um, but he's broken it up into manageable tracks. So of this 30 acres, he's probably got four different burn units within this. Um, so it's a lot easier for him to manage. He can burn on a rotation um, and leave two up and growing um, and don't burn them. And then the other two alternating burns them. And so that creates that diversity in plant succession as well, where you have bare ground all the way up to your wildflowers and some shrubs out here. So perfect quail habitat. Phenomenal pollinator habitat. Um, I'm really excited to see that this has been such a success. And I know the landowner, he's been calling me for the past two months, just bragging on how awesome it looks and how excited he is. Um, and, and he can't wait to watch it the rest of the summer. So um, doing a few, doing a little bit of work on the front end uh, to ensure that your plot is gonna be successful is what, you're, what you wanna do. Um, and then you can end up having plots like this.